Hi, I'm Michelle Paganini, designer for Paganunu and passionate about upcycling. What we're gonna cover today is how to add a cuff to a man's dress shirt to make it have a more feminine look. So we'll end up with a three quarter sleeves and a cuff like the garment that I have on right now. I'm passionate about upcycling because it's good for the planet. You know, about 80% of what goes to any thrift store ends up in the landfill. And so we as sewers have an opportunity to make a difference by using those materials over again. It's great for us as sewers because, if, especially with men's shirts, the construction is good, the fabric is good. And if we're upcycling and putting a sleeve on, we don't have to do the collar, we don't have to do the collar stand, we don't have to do the placket down the front or any of the buttonholes. So it's inexpensive, it's easier, and it's good for the planet. Let's take a look at some examples that relate to the project that we're doing today. In this example, I decided that the blue was a really good complement for the green. It'll look great with jeans. And I added some interest on with part of a placket and a button, and did a similar thing on the other side. And actually, this is the same fabric. It's the reverse side on one side and the reverse on the other, so it's the same colorway, but it looks slightly different. On this example, I originally had done it as a sample and was gonna throw it out because I didn't like this shirt too much, but I realized when I got done, if I could find this ribbon, which I was able to in my studio, that it would tie it all together. So I have some fabric underneath from another shirt and then I've added a ribbon on and a matching waistband. In this example, the colorway is you know, pretty much the same, it's in purples. And I added the same shirt color on just a little bit of it for interest. So we have purple, purple stripe, and another stripe just for fun. The example that we're gonna work on today is this one. And you can see with most men's shirts, even if it fits us women across the shoulder and the bust, the sleeves are usually a little bit too long. So you can roll it up, but the easiest way to make a man's shirt look feminine is to cut off part of the sleeve and make it a three quarter sleeve. And that's what we're gonna look at. So let's look at how to get started with doing that. You can see that I've already cut part of the sleeve off here. And I wanna show you exactly how I did that. I use the same technique, it doesn't matter what size the shirt is. I actually take the sleeve and I lay it out flat and I cut it off right at the top of the placket for the sleeve, just straight across. And so I haven't done it on this one, I've done it on this one already and then I'm ready for the three quarter sleeve. And you can see that you could do a wide, really wide band, like on this one, or a smaller band. And it doesn't matter, it's up to you to decide proportionally what you want. You're gonna make a pattern, and the way that you're gonna make a pattern is take a regular sheet of printing paper, fold it in half, slip it underneath, line up the end, and then mark on the other side where it ends. So you now have something that you can attach on. You're gonna take it out and you're actually gonna make a, a pattern out of it by using a ruler, making a line straight across, and depending on how wide you want it, the other way. And then you're gonna add on a seam allowance like I've done with this one. And if you slip it under here, you can see that there's a half inch seam allowance on each of the sides. So once you've got your pattern, you're ready to choose the fabric that you want, if you haven't already, for what you're gonna do the cuff for. This is an interesting shirt. The blue is actually sort of a purple blue and I had a lot of trouble finding a match for it. So I decided instead of a contrasting cuff, which is what I often do, I was gonna do something harmonious. And I found this lovely linen shirt that's very much the same color celery green and I decided that that's what I wanna use for this one for the cuff. So I harvested the material from here and what you're gonna do with your pattern is you're gonna fold it out, and even though it doesn't say anything on the other side, actually you're gonna cut it first with paper scissors. And what you're gonna end up with is exactly the pattern cut out, and then you're gonna cut it. Now, I have fold on this in two places. The pattern, we slipped it under and there was a fold on this side. We open it up, and then when we go to cut it, there's actually going to be a fold on the other side so that we have half of a cuff right here. It's fitting just half of it. So when you take the pins off and you open it up, I have a fold right here. And when I open it up, I have a whole cuff and I'm going to fold it over and that gives me the completed cuff length. So it's your choice whether or not to interface. In this case, I chose to interface it. 
simply because it's a linen, it'll wrinkle a lot. The rest of the shirt isn't linen and I thought it would be a little bit nicer. This is a crisp fabric and this is a soft fabric. So with interfacing, then you're going to actually sew it and make it a tube to put on here. So let's go to the sewing machine and make this into a tube. We're gonna use a half inch seam allowance. Let's open this up. We can press it as sewn first to set the seam. And then open it up and press it open. And at that point, we're ready to fold it over. It might seem counterintuitive. Most things we do inside out in this case, we're actually going to fold it and put it right side out on the garment. So I've made sure that it's open, the seam is open all the way through, lined it up. I'm gonna line that seam up with the seam that's on the shirt itself. And I'm gonna slip it over the end of the shirt so I've got right side to right side, raw edge to raw edge, and I'm gonna pin it in place. You may find that with your pattern that, the, that it's actually a bit larger or it's a bit smaller than what you did with your pattern. Kind of depends. If, you, if I interfaced it, it might have shrunk a little bit. Usually you can ease that extra in and it's not a problem. If it turns out that it's a little bit too big or small, you can always rip open that seam that we just did and uh, re-sew it. It's no problem. In this case, it looks like mine ended up just a hair big, but I think I can ease that all in. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna sew this with a half inch seam, and then we're gonna turn it inside out and flip it down. So let's go to the machine and get the cuff on there. So again, a half inch seam. Needle down if you have that feature is always nice. Part of what I do for easing is I'm actually tugging a little bit, not pulling it so that it's gonna break the needle, but I'm tugging a little bit on it just to hold both pieces of fabric uh, taut so that there's not a lot of shifting. Get my needle back up again. Okay, thread's clipped, and let's see what we've got. Turn it down just to make sure there aren't any rough spots. Looking pretty good. What I'd like to do now is actually press it, again, as sewn to set the seam. both sides. And then to work on it, I'm gonna turn it inside out. And turning it inside out, what I wanna do is turn the raw edges up towards the armhole because I'm gonna to top stitch on the other side. It will help hold this in place and it'll look particularly nice. That way I don't have to worry about the cuff sort of popping out of shape. So I'm gonna press it up and I'm gonna turn it inside out and do it on the other side as well. Now right side out. And one more press. And this is actually a good time to talk about the kind of thread that you're gonna use. You know, a design feature can be contrasting thread. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to find a match of, of what you're doing. Um, and we have dark green so that you can see it. But you can see the choices here. There's a lot of, of, of difference in what could be done. This one's probably the closest. It might be kind of fun to do variegated. You could even do one of those fancy stitches on your machine right along here 
and, and have that be a feature. So there's some choices about thread. And look at that color match. I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks quite nice. And with the, um, with the interfacing, I think it's just stiff enough to be right for a cuff, and I think it would have been not quite stiff enough given the heaviness of this fabric. So I'm going to press up one more time before I top stitch the edge. Last bit. OK, so it's nicely pressed, looking really good. And as I said, I want to hold down this raw edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch just a little bit away from the edge. I've got a half inch seam allowance in there, so that gives me maybe a quarter inch if I want to do it, or a little bit less. So let's go stop, top stitch. Notice that I'm pulling the fabric from both sides. Not enough to move the needle, but enough to make sure that everything's laying nice and flat. All right, done with the top stitching. And you can see that actually isn't bad just like it is because I already have blue on here, but it just nicely holds it down and if you want to finish off the edge, you can go in and pink it. Also, if you want to add a little extra detail after you're done, you can add on some buttons like I've done on some of the other ones. One big button, a few little buttons, or even this is from another project. I really like the color combination. It's it's pretty close to the other one. I could just make a little stripe down here and I would have done that before I sewed this on right after I put the interfacing on and top stitched it. That's how easy it is to turn a man's dress shirt into a more feminine look with a three-quarter sleeve by adding a cuff.